Miss Ford, I have a question. You you hear from Tupac lately? My addiction is not one of the cool addictions like um, sex addiction. You are nothing but an illegitimate bastard. It was many years ago in Chapel Hill, in the middle of taking Chemistry 11, that God made it clear to me, Harry Payne, you're not going to be a doctor. <laughs> His truth came to me not in the flames of the, the Bunsen, Bunsen burner, and not at the bottom of an overheated, overheated beaker, but in the grades I got at the end of the year, which were pathetic. <laughs> but I was there in Chapel Hill, and now generally purposeless, because I told everybody, particularly meeting other people, I was pre-med. So <laughs> now I was something else, and I had to figure out what that might be. Well, I'd been in Chapel Hill almost a whole year, so I had immersed. I went from a fellow from Eastern North Carolina that wore khaki pants and a blue shirt to, <laughs> to really Chapel Hill. I immersed. When I had hair, it was long. When I had a beard, it was offensive. I wore hippie stuff because everybody then wore hippie stuff. And although I did not smoke the ganja, <laughs> nobody else knew that, okay? <laughs> so what I did was to say like a lot and wow. <laughs> and if you ask me any question from how to stop the war to what time is it, I would give you a grimaced expression that went on for a long time. <laughs> Because in that moment, and right on the outside of me, I was deep. <laughs> so I drifted with the tide of the times and became an abnormal psychology major. And I became really focused and into Latin American history and politics because nobody else had had it either. And we all started from scratch. In my school, we stopped history at 1868. And so I had a chance. So what I did, but of all that learning and all that thought, nothing taught me more than one afternoon at a state mental institution. I had discovered that to order to eat when I graduated, with those degrees, I had to have a graduate degree. They reveal that to you about two thirds of the way through. <laughs> and so what they did is I decided between law and graduate school in psychology. And what I knew both were very orally in terms of verbal communication important, but I had climbed that hill before and there was nothing new on its way. But my nature was to be worried and worrisome, insecure, doubtful, and I didn't know that if I could have a professional distance between me and my, uh, my, my patient. So I signed up for a year of volunteering at John Umstead Hospital. And this was a couple of years ago, at least. So, um, <laughs> So I went out there and they said, wanted me to wear a coat and a badge and a look right kind of thing. And I said in my best Chapel Hill, like man, don't build walls between me and my patients. <laughs> well, they had seen that act before, but, but, but I was like, I mean, like, I mean, really sure I wanted to do this. So they assigned me to a locked, men's ward, and this was serious stuff. We're talking incontinence, we're talking drugs, we're talking smells, we're talking really stuff that really grabs you. But I got, I got hooked on the connections I made there. I found that I was really good at this counseling thing, 
And one afternoon, one of my patients and I, we would get through at four o'clock usually, but we were making such good progress that four became five, became six, but became six, six, uh, six thirty. And finally he said, Harry, let's save a little bit of this progress for next time. <laughs> I said, okay, that will be great. So I said good night, and this is an old painted over military, military barrack with, with, uh, with uh, one entrance up here, and we were down here. I took the long walk up the middle. When I got there, I thought, I don't know those folks up there. And I got there, and there's this big cage, and a big orderly and a nurse with big arms were up there. And I thought, they don't know me either. And so, <laughs> so I, but I said, charm will get you through, you know? <laughs> so I said, hi, my name's Harry Payne, and I'd like to go home. And the nurse <laughs> looked at my outfit, saw my beard, my disheveled hair, my lack of any indicia of anything, and said, we understand. Um, you go back and sit on your bed. We'll be bringing around the medication later. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I don't belong here. She said, of course you don't. Your doctor will talk to you about that tomorrow. Well, at that moment, 12 years of high priced speech pathology went out the window. And I tried to explain that I was, I had no mental issues. And that's very hard to do in that context. And if you can't measure it exactly when you're explaining it. But I heard a commotion behind me and the guys behind me came forward, headed by the guy who I'd just left. And he said, Mrs. Simpson, this is Harry Payne. We are crazy. He is not. Uh, he said, won't you please let him go home? And she took the opinion of seven guys in a locked men's ward in a state mental institution 40 years ago and said, okay. Uh, on the way home, I laughed and I learned. But the thing that I've kept with me all these years is there's genuine power in simply standing on who you really are. That pretense takes you nowhere. And my weakness was mirrored by their extraordinary strength in being comfortable at speaking their own truth. Thank you. Harry Payne.